Hello, I'm Nick Huntington Klein. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about two of the big things that cause problems and headache and heartache uh, for econometricians, uh, and those two things are randomness and endogeneity. Uh, and these can lead us to two major kinds of errors, uh, inference error and identification error. And these are the kinds of things that will make us wrong. And what I mean by that is if we look at a data set and we run our analysis, and then we come to a conclusion, that conclusion will be wrong if we're making one of these two errors. Uh, and so let's talk about what they are. So first, let's talk about randomness and inference error. So data is random. There's, there's a lot of stuff going into it uh, that we can't possibly measure. We don't possibly know all of the things that are the reasons why we see the data that we see. We can try to model the data generating process, but we're always going to be leaving something out. Uh, and beyond that, also, we can't possibly see all of the data. We're studying people, as, econometr as econometricians, most of the time we are studying people. There are billions of people in the world. And so whatever data we've collected for our particular project uh, can't possibly cover everybody. And even if we did manage to get data on every single person in the entire world, we didn't collect data on the people who lived 100 years ago, 100 years from now, right? So there's no way that we can actually have all of the data. So necessarily, the data that we have is going to be a subsample of the data that exists. Here's the problem. If you sample from a larger population, even if you do it perfectly, even if you do it perfectly randomly and everybody has an exact equal chance of being in there uh, or you know whatever other sampling approach that you have, there's going to be some randomness in terms of just what you get. Uh, and the, the result that you have in your sample might not necessarily match the result in the broader population. Uh, and that's just gonna happen by random chance, right? If you flip a coin 100 times, you're not gonna get exactly half heads. I mean, you might, uh, you know, but you, you're likely to get 51%, 49%, 60% occasionally, uh, 35%, right? Now, the more, the bigger your sample is, the, the less likely this is to happen, right? The more likely it is that the result that you get will be just like the result that you would get if you got the broader population. But still, there's going to be randomness in there. And whatever it is that you are estimating, it's going to be dependent on the sample that you picked. Uh, and you know, there's, there's going to be a possibility of inference error if that happens. So let's imagine, for example, that you are running a study about two variables that, in truth, in the population, are completely unrelated to each other, right? So in truth, the relationship between them is absolutely zero. Learning about the value of one of the variables tells you absolutely nothing about the value of one of the other variables. Just for argument's sake, let's say that, it's a, that we're doing a, a study on one coin flip and another coin flip. I want to see, does this coin flip predict that coin flip, okay? So obviously, in the population, in truth, in the true data generating process, the relationship between this coin flip and that coin flip is absolutely zero, okay? But now think about this. If you collect a sample and you estimate the relationship between this coin flip and that coin flip, they're going to be positively related half the time, and they're going to be negatively related half the time because you're never going to get exactly zero. Right? You're always going to get a little bit above, a little bit below. Uh, and so that means that half the time we're going to be above and we're half the time we're going to be below. And so the, 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 our, our ability to make a proper inference about what the relationship between this variable and that variable is, is going to be reliant on our ability to incorporate the randomness in sampling that we know is there into our estimation. To be able to say, okay, I found that there was a positive correlation, let's say, of 0.00001. That's a positive relationship. But being able to say, okay, 0.0001, that could well have happened by random chance, even if the relationship was indeed truly zero. Uh, and so that would be our way of guarding against inference error. So we know that there's randomness in our sample because we could not possibly sample the entire population. So it, our, our result is going to vary a little bit just by random chance based on the sample that we happen to get. That problem will be worse in small samples. It would be worse if our sampling procedure is not very good, you know, if we're, if we're sampling in a biased way. But if we're doing proper work with inference, uh, then we will adjust for all those things and we will say, you know what, that's close enough to zero that I'm going to say it's, it's, I can't tell if it's any different from zero. So properly incorporating for that randomness, accounting for that randomness uh, is going to help us avoid inference error. So that's a thing, a problem that we need to deal with and we need to be aware that in different samples, our result will be different. Another major problem that we run up against is identification error and endogeneity. So first of all, what is identification? So inference was all about taking your sample and generating the result that you get in your data in your sample to the result that you get in the data in the population. Identification is about taking the result that you get in your sample and generalizing that to a theoretical construct. 
right? When we take our, our, the result that we see in the data and we make a conclusion about the, how the world works, right? Not just what, what result we would get if we did that exact same calculation in the broader population, but how the world works. Uh, so does this variable cause that variable? So if we're doing, going back to the coin flip example, right? Uh, not only will the relationship in the data, the correlation in the population should be zero between them. This coin flip should not affect this coin flip, right? But also one of them does not cause the other. Uh, so if we were to get a, uh, a positive relationship, we, and if we, and we said, well, it's because this coin flip causes this coin flip to change its value. When this one gets a heads, that makes this one go like, oh, heads, I want to do a heads too, right? That would be identification error. If the result that we get in our data even if it's a correct data result, if we actually are seeing that in the data, uh, if we make an incorrect theoretical conclusion about it, then that would be identification error. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say we look in some data and we look at the relationship between how much ice cream people eat on a particular day and whether they wear shorts or not. You would probably see in the data that there is a positive relationship between eating ice cream and wearing shorts. And that's not a problem of inference error. I bet in the population, you would probably see that on days where people eat more ice cream, they also wear shorts. So no inference error there. The problem would be identification error if I were to say, oh, it must be that eating ice cream makes you want to wear shorts, right? That's probably not what's going on. Uh, we instead have that on a hot day, people are going to both wear shorts and eat ice cream, right? So if I were to take that data and say, it's probably because ice cream causes you to wear shorts, that would be an identification error. And we are committing that identification error because we have endogeneity in the system that we are not accounting for. What is endogeneity? Endogeneity occurs uh, when there is some other reason why our two variables might be related other than the theoretical one that we have in mind. So if we're saying ice cream causes you to, to, to uh, wear shorts, then the theoretical relate reason why those two variables are related that we have in mind is because ice cream causes shorts wearing. But if there's another explanation for why those two variables might be related, such as on a hot day, you're going to see people eating ice cream and wearing shorts, uh, then we have endogeneity in the system. The ice cream variable is endogenous in that case because it's related to some other variable that also explains uh, whether you wear shorts or not. So identification is how we link the result that we see to the conclusion that we draw from it about how one variable causes another or about what the data generating process actually is underneath all of the data. So in order to combat identification error, economists have to think very carefully about the data generating process that we talked about last time. We have to think about the reasons why two variables might be related to each other, which is going to be based on the data generating process. Uh, and then we need to make sure that we can account for those alternate explanations so that the only explanation that remains is the one that we are interested in. So, for example, uh, in the ice cream and shorts uh, case, maybe we just look at days that are hot, right? Instead of comparing hot days to cold days, we only look at days that are hot, which gets rid of any variation in temperature. And so we are only looking at ice cream and shorts wearing within uh, a temperature. And so uh, that would be a way of getting rid of that alternate explanation, because now in our data, if we're only looking at hot days, there's no more hot days. You're more, you're more likely to do both cold days. You're less likely to do both because there's no more cold days in our data. Uh, and then we could see if that alternate, when that alternate explanation goes away, if we still have a relationship. Uh, so that's one way that we can deal with identification error is by thinking carefully about the data generating process and getting rid of alternate explanations. Uh, there are other ways of doing this, and we need to think carefully about how we can do them. And that's what a lot of this course is going to be about, is how can we avoid identification error by thinking about the data generating process and isolating just the explanation that we are interested in that gives us the theoretical conclusion that we are interested in. So we don't draw bad conclusions from the data that we have. Let me give you an example, a quick example other than ice cream that might be a little more consequential. So there are a number of studies that find that there is a positive relationship between aggression in children and playing video games. Okay, there's a number of studies that find this. Uh, it seems to be a, a fairly consistent result, so it does not appear to be a case of inference error where it's just showing up in one sample. Now, we could conclude from this data that video games make you aggressive, right? That is a theoretical conclusion that we could draw. However, there are alternate reasons why we might see those two variables being related to each other. For example, maybe kids who are more aggressive in the first place choose to play more video games. Uh, there could be some sort of gender issue. There could be some sort of background issue. There could be some sort of parenting issue, right? There's lots of alternate explanations as to why we might see these two variables being positively related 
other than the theoretical version that we are interested in. So if we're interested in seeing if video games cause aggression, we can't just look at the relationship in the data. That would be a correlation between the two variables. If we are interested in causation between the two variables, if we are interested in identifying a particular causal effect, then we need to do something else. We need to do a little bit more econometrics, which is what the rest of this course is going to be about. Thank you.